Today we're cooking in the kitchen. I'm gonna show you one of my favorite recipes for the Van Life Ultimate Casserole. It's a homemade recipe passed down through generations and I've put my own twist on it and it's basically a one pot meal, so not a lot of cleaning. All right, take a look. <laughs> Let's see what you're gonna need. One, you're gonna need a stove, just a little bit. You're gonna need a frying pan or a pot, something like that. We've got already pre-shredded chicken that I keep in the fridge. We've got already diced potatoes and they're like pre-baked. You can get these frozen or do it yourself. Same with the chicken. You can make a whole bunch yourself one time like I do and then just keep them in the freezer or keep them in your fridge. What you can also do is get a rotisserie style chicken at any of your local grocery stores, shred that up and use that throughout the week. I think that's a great idea. I do that a lot of the time. And then you don't have to worry about cooking an entire chicken in your van. I know Hobotech has a really awesome crock pot style pressure cooker, but he's got the generator for that. So if you don't have a generator or anything that can run that pressure cooker, this is gonna be your better option. You can also substitute it with any type of meat or protein you can do a vegetarian option by just leaving out the chicken. I've also used ground beef, meatballs, little cube steak things. Any type of meat really works pretty well. We'll see how it turns out. All right, we're gonna need peas and carrots and sweet corn. You can also get some peppers and any other type of vegetable you want. You know what I don't like? I don't like the peas, carrots, and green bean frozen meldy of vegetables, if you know what I mean. I don't like frozen green beans. Uh, I'm not a big fan of it, so. What's awesome is Kroger has these peas and carrots ones without the green beans. I like those. You're also going to need a Tupperware container or just any type of bowl that you want to eat in. I like to put it in a Tupperware container because then if I don't eat it all, I can save it very easily. You're also going to need a cutting board, a knife, and a big spoon thing, and of course an onion. You can see I've already used some of this. Onions are pretty great. And then you're going to want some spices, some salt and pepper. I'll tell you what, I put this crushed red pepper on everything. I bought a few of them. They're only like 99 cents at most stores. This is a cheaper one, so it's not all full peppers. There's like, see how it's like got dust and everything in it? I think that's why it's a lot cheaper. But I'll tell you what, you get so much more surface area with the peppers that I actually prefer these cheaper kinds that have like the powder in it as well. It's so good. And then you also have the option to use paper plates if you want. All right, let's get started now. You can tell that uh, I wish I had a high top because my hair and head hits the top of this if I stand up straight. So when I'm old, I'm going to be like hunched over. Just got to do more yoga. All right, so let's open up the corn here. Use a knife. Be careful. We're going to open up the peas and carrots. The trick is measuring it out before you put it in the pan because then you can measure how much you want to eat in your bowl. gonna have to take the blazer off so I don't get it dirty and underneath you can see the awesome shirt that I designed you can find that on the nomadiclife.org it's pretty cool it's called the future is in our hands it's trees and stuff in your hands it's pretty cool I like it I've got a lot of compliments on it people come up to me it's always neat I like the attention now we're gonna cut the onion and get rid of this extra outer layer then we're just gonna dice it up you can try all different sizes of onions and things like that, and depending on how much you want. Alternate between having really thick onion chunks and little tiny diced ones. I alternate it. It depends on what you're kind of in the mood for that day. All right, there we go. Let's set up the stove. That was quick. It's a great stove. I definitely recommend it. Link is in the description. I ran out of oil, but I like to put some olive oil in here. I think it adds a good bit of flavor and helps you cook the onions better. But you can do without if you need to. I'm almost out of gas and I forgot to buy extra at the store, so we'll hope there's enough to get us eaten today. Cooking inside your van is actually really great in the winter time like it is now because it keeps it a little bit warm. I like it. Then we're just gonna add a little bit of, of the potatoes and then a bit of the chicken. Now, when you're cooking on this type of open flame, you gotta like move things around a lot. Especially when you don't have oil like I did. Butter also works really well. I like to put a, like a tablespoon of butter into the concoction, into the casserole. Listen to that sizzle. Handy dandy spoon fork. This is gonna help us break this apart. Normally I'll be like in front of it, but I'm trying to film it, so I'm off to the side. 
Now that I think about it, you could also do canned chicken. I'm not a big fan of that. I've had it in buffalo dip before, which is really amazing. But by itself, I'm, I don't really like the taste of canned chicken. Canned tuna is pretty good, but I don't know if it would go well in this recipe. I feel like it wouldn't. Now when the onions start to brown just a little bit, that's the time that we can put in the frozen vegetables. I like to push everything off a little bit to the side here to make room. And see, it's already pre-measured out like we did. And I just flatten it out so it gets a good even distribution. And we're on low, medium heat. It's just kind of a simmer. I like to have it a little bit of brown on the bottom for that texture and for that good smoky taste. And we'll just let that sit for a few minutes. This is actually a recipe that I learned from my high school physics teacher. We were in a special program where it was like highly advanced. It wasn't IB, but it was my school's equivalent. And we all had a very special like engineering curriculum and physics, a lot of different cool things. And he used to be a bodybuilder on Muscle Beach with Arnold and everything like that. So he was really fit, but we all keep in contact with each other the whole center, we're still connected and talking, and every year we would meet up for a high school reunion, but it would be every year, which is cool because I always love to keep up with all my friends and, and see all that stuff, see what they're doing. Anyway, me and him went to the gym, and he taught me a, a really awesome gym routine, which is a lot of the stuff I still do today. And this is one of the things he's like, to me, food is fuel, and I eat the same meal every day for every meal and of course that's pretty crazy but i really like this one it's pretty good i've modified it a bit he also likes to put rice in it and i i can't remember exactly what it was if i still have the recipe that he gave me i'll link it in the description and maybe i'll plaster it over on top i think it's pretty great it's actually one of my favorite meals now as well it's a very simple recipe now i'll add the salt i like himalayan pink salt it's got really awesome minerals i think it's iodine which is the big thing Sea salt does not have the same minerals, so it's not as good for you, actually. I'm not a doctor, so don't take this as advice, but that's what I've read. I like a good bit of salt. It used to be that salt was one of those things that was super bad for you, and you'd always try to get low-sodium things. But I've actually read a study where more people are dehydrated than they are over-saltinated. It's not a word, but you understand what I mean. So it's actually healthier to eat more salt. Your mileage may vary. <laughs> I also use salt when I'm fasting for the electrolytes. And when you're trying to pack on muscle, that's what you gotta do. And then my secret ingredient in basically everything, red pepper flakes. And like I said, this is kind of dusty, so it's perfect. Not like lint dust, but pepper dust. I like a lot of it. Gotta get that spice. You know, variety is the spice of life. I think this is the spice of life. Da -da -da. Did you see that? Ah, oh, see, that's the problem is I'm clumsy and I just spilled corn and peas on my carpet. So you always wanna stir slowly so you don't spill. And I just kind of flatten it out so that it all kind of like warms together and evenly distributed. If I had more fuel in the tank, I might turn it up for a little bit just to crisp the bottom. But right now it's just heating up on what I have left of the butane. This is absolutely my favorite little stove. It's so small, it fits perfectly in the cabinet, almost like it's made for it. It's super safe. I'm never worried about it exploding or anything like that and destroying me in a fiery ball of flames. This is gonna get you your protein, your carbohydrates, your sodium, your vitamins, your beta carotene. What else? All the good stuff you need. You, this is like a staple meal. And like I said, you can put rice in it, or I've even done it, I've even put this on top of ramen noodles without the soup part. It was kind of like a uh, chow mein, it's pretty good. My fan vent has this big glare on my forehead. It's not very aesthetic. Well, it looks like we ran out of gas, so. Seems like it's done, perfect timing. Always make sure you turn off your stove, that's uh, gonna be important. And then we just put it back right into the container. And then if you don't eat it all, you save it for later, it's perfect. And you can just throw it back in the pan to heat it up. I'm also doing this with my left hand. All for the camera. And we've got an absolutely perfect portion size. It's just beautiful and tastes delicious. Let's see. This really is one of my favorite meals. 
Thank you guys for watching me cook and eat my lunch today. Let me know if you have any cool recipes that you like to do. I prefer one pot recipes because then I don't have to clean a whole lot. And doing your dishes in your van is always kind of a chore. That's probably the major downside. If you do try the recipe, let me know how it goes. And if you added anything yourself, it's very modifiable. You can put anything you want, any spices. I've tried it in a million different ways. And this is kind of my favorite. This is my go-to. Thank you for watching. I will catch you guys. Guess what day? When am I going to catch you guys? Tomorrow.